Welcome students. In this video, I explain why I keep banging on about sticky notes, interactive revision tools, and using them several times. This is part of the metacognition series, also known as thinking about thinking or thinking about learning. And I will be focusing on the revision cycle or the revision flow chart that you have typically seen in some of my um, videos, um, showing how I would expect students to go through a process in order to remember the information um, that they have been um, revising in an exam. We know from scientific research that the more frequently we visit an idea or a concept or a task or a skill, etc., the better our memory of that knowledge or the more we have mastered that skill. We need to interact with the knowledge or the skill we're trying to learn. It won't just um, seep into our memory by diffusion because learning is not a passive process. Learning is an active process. And one of the terms used to describe some of the methods that I use in my videos is active recall or active learning. When these methods are used to recall ideas and skills that you've learned in the past, they become known as examples of retrieval practice. You are trying to force yourself to make connections that are not just metaphorical, but you want your brain to literally make neural connections, so actual synaptic connections between different parts of your brain. The more senses you involve in the active learning, the more of the your brain you are using and the more likely you will be able to recall the information or skill. For example, um, if you're using visual, audio and kinesthetic, as in using your fingers and touch um, methods to interact with some content or a skill, this is why using the sticky notes is really good because you're having to pick them up, put them down, shuffle them about and so on. So you're interacting with them kinesthetically. If you have a revision partner, so you're working with somebody, you're asking them questions and they're answering, you're using audio and visual, visual um, senses. So those are really good um, opportunities to use your various senses in revising. If you are using um, both the left and right hand side of your brain, you are more likely to recall the information or skill. For example, using the language oriented left half of your brain and the motion oriented right half of your brain will also help you to remember um, key information and make those connections. Lastly, the more frequently you engage with the information or the skill, the more likely you will be able to recall it in an exam situation. So uh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Outliers a few years back where he described that it takes about 10,000 hours to master something. Um, that has since been challenged, um, but the number of hours is still a large number. And you can just think about some of the things that you learn over time. Learning to ride a bike, you can't learn it just in a second, it takes some time. Learning to drive a car also takes a um, certain number of hours. Learning how to play a musical instrument, how to speak a language and so on. Obviously, we do not have that much time before your exams, but you can make a significant impact on your memory if you review the information at least three times before you need to recall it in the exam. And I think you do have that time between now and your exams. Because your GCSEs are over two years, I usually advise students to start their revision or retrieval practice using the interactive revision tools that I've put in the videos, but I used to do it the old fashioned way in the classroom at the start of their science GCSE course to give them an opportunity to do at least three retrieval practices in a year one of their GCSE course and three in their second year, totaling six times. The more times, the better, but at least three would be a great start. So the revision flowchart or the revision cycle that I have constructed um, shows how you can approach revision. For some of you, motivation to revise is an issue. So I suggest start with a topic within the subject that you believe you understand to give you a confidence boost. Get some past paper questions, a stopwatch and time yourself doing past paper questions in a 20 minute session. OK, the first 20 minutes has been shown to be the most effective time when concentrating on a task. After that, you almost go into an autopilot mode and you don't really remember what you've done after that first 20 minutes. After completing the past paper questions, mark them and see if you are getting more than 80 percent of the marks. If so, 
you get a confidence boost and a pat on the shoulder um, and you are ready to move on to a topic that you're not so good at or not so confident at. If you did not do as well as you thought you should have in that original topic, then you will need to focus on it in the next step. So in the next step, you will have to make an interactive revision tool that will enable you to reuse it repeatedly and will allow you to interact with the information using a range of your senses. Making the tool is revision in and of itself. So the fact that you're getting information from a source and putting it into a format that you can then use for retrieval practice is revision in itself. Um, so you can spend 20 minutes making it and then another time actually interacting with it. So once the re interactive revision tool has been made, you can now reuse it for retrieval practice later on. How Hopefully you can now see the rationale behind what I coach you to do on this channel and you can appreciate how this intensive way of learning can have a massive positive impact on your memory. Thank you for listening and I wish you good luck.